Time is hard. Thank you so much. This is our first Marengo short, so you're a guinea pig, and I'm <laughs> ever so grateful. Um, why don't you tell people a little bit about who you are and what you prefer for parents and kids to call you? Sure. Um, first of all, thank you, Heather, for yeah. being in my backyard. Um, we're, welcome to my backyard. It's my um, <laughs> patio living room. Um, Heather has been so great about just coming to my house and... Um, having a little chat about yeah. parent conferences. Um, I think uh, you know how passionate I am about this process. And um, so for parents who don't know me, I'm Catherine Siebert Hedo. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and I've been a part of South Pasadena School District for almost 30 years. Oh my gosh. A little painful to say that because I can no longer pass for 25. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> That's amazing. But um, yeah, and I, I think it's so important for parents to know that I am a parent. Yeah. And so when we talk about these parent conferences, I'm not talking about just my role as a counselor or as a social worker in a school system. Yeah. But I'm really talking about it from a parent perspective too. And so... Um, yeah, you've, you've been where we all are. I have totally been where all of you are. I've been in those places where a report card has just been exhilarating. And I've also been in places where um, you kind of gasp when you look at the report card and think, oh, I thought that area would be a little higher and so I've, I've been in both situations but um, and I've also been in both situations where I have come alongside parents and teachers in the process yeah as well as been a parent myself and so I um, hold both of those roles dearly yeah and um, you know come with a great passion for this process um, so thank you for having yeah me. thanks well okay so parent-teacher conferences, there are probably some people who haven't actually been to one or had one in right. maybe ever or in at least a year. So tell us, what is a parent-teacher conference? What, what, what can we expect? What, you know, what do you want us to know before we even sign up? Um, well, I think the parent, first of all, the parent-teacher conference, um, I think most parents view that and say, okay, great, I've got to go to this parent-teacher conference. It's sort of like one of those items that they check off the box, you know, for their children. And they think, okay, we've got a parent-teacher conference coming up, and it's my time that I get the report card. And um, teacher reach out to me, so I better sign up for a time and, and go. Um, yes, it is a time when you get your report card. But let me also say, because I'm a parent that is much further in this journey, that this is such a golden opportunity. Um, you know, I, I have to confess, I feel a little envious of parents who get to have like this dedicated 20, 30 minute time to get to know their child. Mm. You know, sometimes in parenting, you know, we birth these children and we think, oh, we know these children and, and we've been in a part of their preschool years. And so, yeah, we've got it down whether they're, you know, gregarious or whether they're, you know, shy or whether they, you know, um, you know, are athletic or what, you know, whatever their strengths are, you know, we kind of have that list. But let me tell you, this is an amazing time of growth for your children. Yeah. And they're going through a, such an interesting stage developmentally. It's that stage of industry. And so this is this marvelous opportunity for you to really, really have a fuller knowledge, to have more information about your child. You get to talk to somebody who is an expert. Yeah. Your teachers yeah. are not just experts academically, but they're experts in, in child development. Yeah. And you get to understand for the first time how your child is operating in an environment outside of you. Yeah, yeah. And so it just becomes this wealth of information huh. um, to really understand your child, how they are responding to other children. Um, what's catching their attention? Maybe you're understanding for the first time that your child has a strong interest in science or in art, and um, you didn't know that. These children are emerging and they're growing and their little brains are like sponges. So. I just encourage parents to really move into this and understand this as one of the most precious opportunities. No other time in life will somebody take 20 to 30 minutes of your life to sit down and talk about your child and for you to understand, yes, not only are they meeting grade level standards, but who are they yeah. in this other environment? Who are they in what I like to call their work environment? That's great. You know, I never really thought, I always say, I wish I could be a fly on the wall. <laughs> in a way, this is the window into being a fly on the wall, right. where the teacher is actually giving me 
what I wish that I had every day. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So, we've signed up for our parent-teacher conferences. They, that comes in different ways. What should we expect? How do we prepare? What are, you know, tell us. Yeah, and the first thing I do want to say is if you haven't signed up for a parent-teacher conference, sign up for a parent-teacher conference. Make that one of your goals, um, you know, to always sign up for a parent conference um, in that November slot. We also have them in March, too. Um, I know March is optional, but man, take advantage of signing up for a parent conference. Really get to know what's going on for your child's um, daily life, those six, seven hours that they're away from you. Really understand it. So first of all, sign up. Great. And go. Yeah. Mark it. <laughs> <laughs> In bold letters. You heard it here. Highlight. Go, go, go. Yay. Show up on yeah. time. Take that full time Great. You know that you have. So um, I made a couple notes. Let me just Great. refer to my Do notes. Yeah, so once you get there, I think, um, you know, my first piece of advice would be <clears throat> to listen. I know so many times as parents we go and, you know, we have this little running list of like, ah, oh, I want to make sure that, that I asked the teacher about that, or I want to make sure the teacher knew, man, did he love that Halloween, you know, activity, or, or um, did you see the picture, or, you know, when those are all wonderful and sweet moments, but if you can go and just have the reminder in the back of your mind, man, I'm gonna spend the first 10 to 15 minutes listening to what my teacher tells me. You will walk away with such a wealth of information and it's just a richer experience if you can really remind yourself to listen. If there's something that's really, really important that you feel like you need to tell your teacher, um, you know, maybe there's been a disruption in your family or a death or a mm -hmm. loss or something has been really difficult. You might want to email the teacher ahead of time and just say, you know, I'd love to just spend maybe two minutes at the end of our conference. I, I, there were a couple things that I think, you know, would be important for you to know. And so maybe, I, but I want to make sure and listen first and understand where my child is landing academically, understand what that report card looks like. But I'd love a couple minutes where I can just tell you um, something that I think is, is valuable or important information for you to know, but really kind of go with that, that idea of I'm going to try and listen and just really hear what my teacher tells me. The second thing that I would really encourage is that you take a look at that report card in three different um, sections. The first part of the report card, and literally when you look at that report card, the first part of it is going to be all those grades. Yeah. We are going to be looking at language arts, we're going to be looking at math, we're going to be looking at science, social studies, actually I think it was language arts, language, social studies, science, and then math. And that's sort of that first almost two-thirds of the report card. And that's when you, where you're going to see those numbers, the fours, the threes, the twos, the ones. Um, you know, the twos approaching grade level standards. The threes are what we're aiming for our students to be on grade level, that they're really accessing that curriculum, that they're as close to grade level. Um, and so, you know, if you have some grades that, you know, you have a question on, you can ask the teacher, you know, gosh, is that two closer toward a one or are they closer to a three? Um, just have an understanding. The teacher will be able to give you like the exact percentages of how um, you know something equals a four or equals a three or equals a two or a one or something like that but I think it's helpful you know if there are some areas that feel gray to you as a parent that you ask the teacher you know are we closer to that grade level standard or are we getting closer to that grade level standard and you know have an understanding maybe about that so that's that first you know like two-thirds of the report card on that sheet of paper but the other piece that I want parents to really pay attention to is there's a whole other section that is just so valuable in information mm. and that's the work study habits so why are those work habits for my child do they follow directions do they work cooperatively in a group that starts to touch on that whole area of how they approach their work so you know pay attention to the work study um, piece the you know, the work habits um, the behaviors and that's another section and then of course the third section is the narrative where the teacher really expounds on this and talks about oh my goodness you know here's what it's really like in that daily you know interaction
interaction with your child and pay attention to it. So I, I think it could be helpful for some parents to break the report card into three different sections, which is the grade level standards, the, the, the actual grades in those academic subjects, and then that other piece, which is the work habits, the social interaction, and then that third piece, which is a narrative. Um, as a parent, if you're getting into that conference and seeing this for the first time, take a moment to kind of look through that um, and and understand kind of the layout yeah, of the report that's, card. Yeah, that's super helpful. I don't know that I had that going into my first parent-teacher <laughs> conference. Thankfully, the teacher, I think, kind of broke that down for me, but, um, you know, I found myself drawn to numbers or drawn to, like, the yeah. narrative because it was the thing that made sense so just really kind of looking at that that's that's so great and if there are some asterisks on that report card you know they might be areas that the the classroom hasn't really addressed yet um, maybe parts of math that the children haven't gotten to that they will mm -hmm. get to later on in the year but there might be some asterisks of areas of concern pay attention to those as a parent and and take that in as part of the whole picture of your child great that's great so what, um, I think when you and I were talking earlier, there was also an idea of like, if we, what's the best way to kind of talk with our teacher about what we can take home or how to take it home, or if there's a way that we can be helping, mm -hmm. I don't know, I guess, can you speak to that a little? Yeah, I honestly think that if you go in as a parent, um, really listening, our teachers are so amazing, you know, and they're such professionals that they're gonna give you this wealth of information. But I always encourage parents to ask a question. <laughs> but it has to be, it has to come from a willingness, you know, to really follow through with the question. But ask the question, is there, you know, is there anything I can do or, or what home support could I offer that would benefit my child? Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and talk about that and you know a lot of times teachers will say yeah you know really reading at night is so fantastic and they will be very clear about giving you the exact minutes of what they would expect for that grade level and so often they'll say reading or you know maybe they'll say yeah I think we would really benefit from stepping up a little bit on, on completing homework oh, mm -hmm. um, or um, these are the rules that I think you know might be worth repeating at home or you know something they might have some ideas and you know if parts of that don't feel realistic and saying wow you know um, my family doesn't get home till seven, eight o'clock, and by the time we have dinner and bath time, we find it really hard, and, and my son has, you know, um, baseball practice and things like that, and so talk to the teacher about what it seems to be realistic. Um, think about using your weekends. So say, golly, Monday and Tuesdays are just really heavy work days for our family, and, and we've got piano practice and ballet and everything else, or whatever's going on. Maybe you say very honestly, I don't know that we can get this done, but um, how, how could I, Find another time. Maybe it's Friday afternoon. Maybe it's Saturday morning. Maybe it's Sunday. But if you're going to ask that question, you know, what home support can I offer my child? It's, um, you know, and, and you make that promise. Follow through with it. Yeah. It's yeah. to your child's benefit. Your teacher would never suggest that unless they know that it could really help. Yeah. You know. I and mean, I imagine that teachers get excited about that partnership too. That you know yes. that that. Just like we get excited for teachers to carry on some of the lessons we've been teaching our children at home, I imagine teachers also really appreciate when we're able to do that at home in reverse, yeah. Absolutely, because you know what I, I have been so passionate about for all these decades in education is I am passionate about that homeschool connection. Yeah. So when we have that homeschool connection, you offer consistency to your child and you offer the very best um, the, that that child can have. When they have people cheering for them, when they have people in their circle and everyone's working toward the good, Man, we see when the home and the school are partnered, we see such enormous success. That's really the success story is when everyone, you know, gets behind that child for that child's benefit and that child's success to really move things in the right direction. It great. takes a partnership. Yeah, great. How do we how do we close out our <laughs> parent teacher conferences? Um, I'm just looking at my notes, seeing if I've. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, I think I think I think I've touched on a few of the points um 
Yeah, I mean, I, I am a big advocate about being open with our kids. And I think a, a report card is, is, you know, such a wealth of information that I think there's room for you to talk to your children. You know, sometimes parents will say to me, oh my gosh, I know my child is struggling. I don't know if it's a good idea, you know, to show my child the report card. That's fine. It's not a matter of showing them a piece of paper. It's about having that conversation. And I would say, Heather, that I think in every report card, there's something to celebrate. Mm. There's something to celebrate. Um, and, you know, you will walk away from the parent conference following these um, tips with such valuable information. And there's going to be something new that you learn about your child. Yeah. And there's something to celebrate, whether it's their effort or whether it's... Um, that they've made progress or whether they have been, you know, incredible um, socially or, you know, something. But there's always a little something to celebrate. So, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, I'm an advocate of having a conversation with your child. Yeah. I think sometimes we kind of have this sense of like, okay, mom and dad are going to go off and have this talk with the teacher. The kids know what's going to happen. The teachers talk about it openly. And then, you know, you come home and you say, yeah, yeah, it went okay. And, that's maybe where it, it dwindles or it, you know, the conversation drops off. But um, I just think it's a, a really, really rich moment as a parent to yeah. talk about um, the process with them and what you learned. Um, um, you might even want to ask your child if they have a goal for this next three, four months before the next report card. You know, is there something we could work on together? Um, would you like to improve? Parents are always kind of surprised. They said to me, yeah, I asked that question. I was like so surprised that they knew um, <laughs> that, that, they, that they should be doing better in this area. And I'm like, they do know, yeah. folks, they do know. Even if you haven't had like intensive conversations and say, like, okay, you're landing at a two or they, that's not the importance. The importance is that they know that you are in this journey with them yeah. and to have that. You know, that's so funny. I hadn't really thought about it. My husband sometimes says these brilliant things that I don't give him enough credit for sometimes. But the other day, <laughs> he asked our third grader, he said, you know, we're getting ready to do parent-teacher conferences. What do you think Miss Diaz is going to say about you? Like, what do you think we're going to learn? Yes. And it was such a, in my mind, just hearing you talk now, it was such a great prep because he then tells us, then we'll go, and then we get, we have this conversation back of like, oh, here's where you were exactly right. You know, here you were spot on, and here's where maybe yeah, <laughs> your sense of reality might be a little distorted, right? <laughs> so, but I hadn't really thought about that. It really kind of starts, you know, throughout. Like it's just it's just the feedback cycle, right? Yeah, and I actually I think that's even a great process. Asking yeah. your children, you know, um, gosh, what do you think your teacher's going to tell me? You yeah. can just ask an open-ended question, and that. A parent-teacher conference is not something to dread. Yeah. Sometimes I'll have parents come in and go, oh, great, here we go on the parent-teacher conference. Like, it's, you know, it's really, I, I really would welcome people to use the word curious. Yeah. Get curious. Get excited. You're learning. And even if it's not the most welcome news or the news that you were hoping for on a certain grade, it's great information and you're going to walk away, you know, um, having that value. And maybe a plan, you know, I mean, that, that for me, there were a couple years ago where one of my kids was just having, you know, just a little behind on things that we were concerned about. And to be able to have that meeting that then had a plan, like, here's a plan. Right. We don't need to jump to like, you know, this extreme plan. That's a possibility in the future, yeah. but it just kind of helps map out, okay, here's, here's what the journey could look like for us in order to make sure that your kid gets what they need. Here's your role, here's our role. Yeah, and how, and even asking your child, how can I come alongside of you mm -hmm. to support that goal? Mm -hmm. um, because we all know that whenever that person steps into the goal, they're going to be much more invested. Yeah. Right? So to listen to your children's goals. Um, okay, so writing maybe isn't your favorite subject, but you'd like to improve. What, what might that look like? And is there anything that I could do to help you? Um, you know, asking yeah. some of those questions. So I think asking beforehand is really interesting. You know, I think it's all, I, I used to ask that of my kids. I'm like, so I'm excited. I get to meet with your teacher and we get to look at your report card. What do you think she's going to tell me? It's actually just sort of a fun question to yeah. ask. But it is also very interesting to see how aware they are 
and how um, their awareness is related to what is actually going on yeah. and, and things like that. The other thing I would say is I'm just going to bring in a personal suggestion uh, or a personal example of what I used to do with my children. Um, I think most of us as parents have a general sense of our children's capabilities at, at, at a certain point within el elementary school. We might know that they have a preference for certain subjects. They might even know that, um, we might know that um, maybe language arts comes easier than math or that science is their favorite subject. You know, we have a sense of that. And um, I think, um, you know, we have a sense of their capabilities. And so, you know, in talking with other parents, I knew some parents were like, okay, if, if my child gets, you know, all fours, I, I'm gonna really, you know, have a celebration or something. But I really would celebrate every report card. Mm -hmm. There's always something on there to celebrate. And the other thing that I used to do with my kids is right beneath in that academic section, right beneath the number is the um, letter that is given for effort. So when you're in the language arts, what's the effort? And there are, um, I think there are three choices. I think there's an I for needing improvement, or I can't remember if it's an I or an N, but, um, or an M, meeting standards, and then there's an E, meaning that they demonstrated, you know, excellence. And teachers, you know, some teachers are, you know, they view the M or the E, you know, very differently. They're like, okay, they're expected to come and have, you know, good motivation and they get an M. But those M's or those E's were the parts that I always celebrated with sure. my kids. So because I knew that if they put in the effort that they were capable of getting, you know, a, a grade, um, I celebrated their effort. And so it may be a way that other parents would want to move into a report card too. I found that to be really very helpful. Um, and we would do things like um, they got to pick their favorite meal and I would make their favorite meal in celebration of their report card. Sometimes we would go and um, you know just grab some hot chocolate or something and we'd really talk about the report card. But we would celebrate that and I would always highlight their effort um, because I think all of us if, well, most of us, if not all of us, would agree that if our child is giving forth their best effort, yeah. um, that's the victory. Yeah. That's the victory. Well, and I feel like that's with all the conversation around learning loss and the things that we've experienced over the last year and a half, really having that momentum and that inertia back and figuring out how we grow that with ourselves and with our children. Yeah. It, there, there is so much to celebrate in that. And there's that whole growth mindset again too where not everything comes easy uh, you know very few people in life have something like they have everything come easy right and if they do I don't want to meet them <laughs> right <laughs> right most of us have had some challenge at some sort right yeah. and so you know that growth mindset again in talking with a child about a goal it's like gosh you know what are your goals um young children can do this yeah young children can do this and children can you know, it's not a matter of showing your child the paper or report card. You can make the decision um, or not of, of revealing right. that to them. But it's more the conversation. It's more that emotional connection to your child. Um, it's more that um, coming alongside of them, being a part of their educational process that is so important. It's a gift that you have a chance to really give them. And it's a gift at this age and this stage where they like having you involved. Yeah. Believe me, right. I'm much further down the line. There's going to come another yeah. time when you won't have a parent conference. When your children are really, you know, I've got this. Yeah. You know, and you may take a, a, a back seat to the whole process of their educational, um, you know, of, of what they choose to learn or if they choose to talk about their grades with you. So um, my son is at a UC system and they have canceled the parent teacher conferences at, <laughs> at the stage. <laughs> right? Tax dollars I'm wasted. Out. Yeah. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so, but I'm just saying. Yeah, though, that's great. Yeah, this is this really golden yeah. opportunity. It's such a sweet and precious time. So, um, you know, Find a way to celebrate it. Find a way to listen and learn. Find a way to move in, take a, a greater stance to be a partner in this educational process and to really celebrate who your child is, getting to know them on, on a much yeah. deeper level. 
Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to talk us through parent-teacher conferences. Is there anything else that you, any closing words that you'd... Um, have fun. Great. Have fun. Enjoy this. Just savor this moment yeah. and, and really enjoy it. Well, and it is such a gift that the, if, for the teachers who really take the time to sit down with us right. and share. Yes. Yeah. I would say one more thing. Let me add one more thing. Um, I'll, I will just say that um, I have had the privilege of being in this school district for so many decades, and our teachers are amazing. Our teachers are so amazing. And I think if we take anything from this pandemic, um, you know, I had one of those yard signs in my front yard just thanking the essential workers, um, the people that honestly, I, I suppose I took for granted, but man, some of these people who have just been amazing. And I would say, I would include teachers and educators in that whole process. They have been remarkable in this whole thing. and. Teachers always appreciate a thank you. They always appreciate an acknowledgement of what it really takes to be in a classroom six, seven hours a day with your child and um, being so invested in your child's personal growth. Yeah. Um, um, say thank you. Say thank you and, and um, or write them a note of thanks. Um, let them know how grateful you are I've had many, many, many parents, <laughs> you know, in this last few months call and say, long distance learning was horrific. Yeah. I have no idea. I, and uh, the, the <laughs> phrase that was repeated over and over again was, I am not an educator and I'm trying to <laughs> yeah. come alongside my children. And yes. It's like, I think for so many of our parents, it was like, wow, it is tough. Yeah. It is a tough job. So take that moment to look your teacher in the eye and say, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for all that you do. Um, or write them a little note. Um, they will so appreciate that. Perfect. Thank you. What a great way to end. Thank yeah, you. Thanks for spending fun. the time with us. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, thank you for having me.